In this video, we're going to give an introduction to the concept of present value of an annuity. We're going to look at the definition of what an annuity is. We'll then look at how to derive the formula for calculating the present value of an annuity, also known as PVA. Then we'll look at some examples on how to calculate the PVA using the formula. And last of all, how to calculate the PVA using interest factors. So what is an annuity? In simple terms, it's a type of investment that involves equal amounts of money that is deposited or withdrawn at regular intervals. We can value an annuity in terms of its future value, FVA, how much the whole investment is worth in the future, or in terms of its present value, PVA, how much the investment is worth in today's dollars. Let's look at an example to help us better understand how present value of the annuity or PVA works. Consider a scenario where we want to be able to withdraw a regular amount of $1 at the end of each year for four years. The bank pays an interest rate of 1% per annum compounded annually. And for this analysis, we're going to need to use this compound interest formula. PV is equal to FV divided by 1 plus R to the N. PV is your present value, FV is the future value, R is the interest rate per period, and N is the number of periods. So let's begin with this table. We want to be able to withdraw $1 at the end of each year for four years. So at the end of year one, we want to be able to have $1. In order to have $1 at the end of year one, we need to deposit an amount at the beginning of year one. And this amount is given by this compound interest formula. It is $1 divided by 1.01, a slightly less than a dollar because over the course of a year, it earns 1% interest, which will grow it to $1. At the end of year two, we want to be able to withdraw another $1. So again, we need to invest an amount at the beginning of year one, and this amount is $1 divided by 1.01 squared, less than the first amount, because this amount has got two years to compound to bring it to $1. At the end of year three, we want to have another $1. So this time we need to invest a dollar divided by 1.01 cube at the beginning of year one, because it has got three years to compound to take it to $1. And the last amount, $1, we want to access that at the end of year four. So this time we need to invest $1 divided by 1.01 to the four at the beginning of year one, so that it has got four years to compound to take it to $1. So when we talk about present value of the annuity, we refer to the total amount that we need to put in at the beginning of the investment period so that we can have regular payout. In this case, a regular payout of dollar at the end of each year. So for this example, the present value of the annuity is simply the summation of those terms, which is a dollar divided by 1.01 plus a dollar divided by 1.01 squared plus a dollar divided by 1.01 cubed plus a dollar divided by 1.01 to the four. And this gives us $3.9020, which means that we only need to deposit this amount slightly less than $4 in order to be able to achieve this return. In our previous example, the calculation of the PVA was relatively straightforward because it consisted of only four terms. In reality, we often would have to repeat these calculations for tens or hundreds of terms. But luckily, there is a formula to help us simplify the calculation. We're now going to look at how to derive the formula. But firstly, let's consider the general case for calculating the PVA. So consider a scenario where we want to receive a regular payout amount of $8. The interest rate per period is R percent and there is a total of n periods. We begin with this table here. We want to be able to withdraw a dollars at the end of period one. So this means that we will need to invest a dollars divided by one plus r at the beginning of the investment period. This gives it one year to compound to a dollars. At the end of period two, we want to withdraw our second a dollars. So this means that we will need to invest 
a dollars divided by 1 plus r squared at the beginning because it then has got two years to compound to take it to a dollars. So at the end of period three, we want to again be able to have a dollars. So this time we will need to invest a divided by 1 plus r cubed. This amount has got three years to compound to take it to a dollars. And we keep on repeating this process until we get to the last period, the end period where we want to get our last a dollars. So for this last amount, we will need to invest a divided by one plus r to the n at the beginning. It then has got n periods to compound to take it to a dollars. So when we're talking about the present value of this annuity, we're essentially looking for the sum of all these amounts at the beginning of the investment period. So our PVA is basically A divided by 1 plus R plus A divided by 1 plus R squared plus A divided by 1 plus R cubed plus all the way to A divided by 1 plus R to the n. The expression for the PVA is actually a geometric series. We can first factorize out the A so that we've got the A outside the bracket multiplied to the sum of all these terms. These terms form a geometric series with the first term of the series being 1 on 1 plus R. The common ratio of this series is also 1 on 1 plus R since going from one term to the next we need to multiply by 1 on 1 plus r. And in this series, there are a total of n terms. We can simplify all of this using the sum of geometric series formula. Sn is equal to a times r to the n minus 1 on r minus 1. So using this formula, this expression for PVA will simply reduce to this term inside the bracket. We can see that the capital A gets replaced by 1 plus r, the capital R, which is a common ratio, gets replaced by 1 on 1 plus r as well. And since there are n terms, the capital N gets replaced by n. And if we tidy up the algebra even further, this just reduces to a times 1 minus 1 on 1 plus r to the n or this divided by r. Now this expression inside the bracket is what we call the present value interest factor or PVIFA. So using this abbreviation, the PVA simply reduces to just A times PVIFA. So let's have a look at an example to see how to apply the formula to calculate the PVA. For our first example, we want to find out what sum of money must Tom invest today so he can receive regular amounts of $5,000 per year for the next 30 years? The interest is 10% per annum and it gets compounded annually. The first thing we need to do is to identify the values we need to substitute into the variables in the formula. We need to know the regular withdrawal amount A, the interest rate per period R, and the number of periods N. For this question, because Tom wants to withdraw $5,000 every year, our regular withdrawal amount A is going to be $5,000. The interest rate is stated to be 10% per annum, and because it gets compounded annually, we can just keep R at 10% without further adjustment. The term of the annuity is 30 years, so the value of N will simply be 30. After we've got all these values, we then substitute into the PVA formula. So A gets replaced with $5,000, R gets replaced with 10%, and N gets replaced with 30. Now remember that 10% is the same as 0.1 as decimal. So we're going to replace the 10% with 0.1. Putting this into the calculator, we get the PVA equaling 47,134 dollars and 57 cents. So putting this into perspective, over 30 years our total payout is 150,000 dollars and in order to achieve this all Tom needs to do is to deposit 47,134 dollars and 57 today so that he can benefit for the next 30 years. 
Let's look at our second example. Mr. Jones would like to receive an allowance of $7,500 each month from his superannuation fund for 20 years after he retires. What is the upfront sum required to be invested given the interest rate is 6% per annum compounded monthly? Again, same set of steps. We need to first identify the values to substitute into the formula. We need the regular withdrawal amount A, the interest rate per period R, and the number of periods N. In this question, Mr. Jones wants to have $7,500 each month. So our A value, the regular withdrawal amount, will be $7,500. The interest rate stated in the question is 6% per annum, but because it gets compounded monthly, we need to adjust this to an equivalent monthly interest rate. So we simply take 6 divided by 12, and this will give us 0.5% per month. So our value is simply just 0.5% per month. The term of the annuity is 20 years, but because he wants to be able to withdraw every month, there's going to be a total of 20 times 12 or 240 months. So our N value will be 240. And after we've got all these values, we simply substitute into the PVA formula. The A gets replaced with $7,500. The R gets replaced with 0.5% and the N gets replaced with 240. Now remember, 0.5% is the same as 0 0.005 as decimal. So we replace it with 0 0.005. Then put into the calculator, the PVA is equal to $1,046,855.70. So this means that if Mr. Jones wants to receive $7,500 each month for 20 years, that's a total payout of $1,800,000. He will need to have $1,046,855.79 today in his account so that he can receive this payout over the next 20 years. Now that we have seen how to calculate the PVA using the formula, another way is to use the interest factors. You may have come across these tables, which we call the present value interest factors table. Essentially, all these numbers in the cell comes from substituting different values of R and N into the PVIFA formula. For example, suppose R is equal to 2% and N is equal to 4. We're going to substitute into the PVIFA FA formula, R gets replaced with 2%, N gets replaced with 4. Putting all this into the calculator, we get 3.8077. Now this corresponds to this cell over here. R is 2% and N is equal to 4. Another example, if R is equal to 5% and N is equal to 3, we do the same thing. Substitute R for 5%, and n for 3. Evaluating this, we get 2.7232. This corresponds to this cell in the table. That's for r is equal to 5% and n is equal to 3. Let's look at an example on how we can use the interest factor table to help us calculate the PVA. Daniel would like to receive $3,000 each year for five years, what amount does Daniel need to invest today if the interest rate is 3% per annum compounded annually? So we need to identify the A, the regular amount he wants to receive, which is $3,000. The interest rate is 3% per annum, and because it gets compounded annually, we don't have to adjust the interest rate. We can just keep it at 3%. He also wants to be able to receive this amount every year for five years. So our N is equal to five. So having the values of R and N, we're going to go to the table and this will correspond to the interest factor value of 4.5797. So using PVA is equal to A times PVIFA. We substitute A for 3000 and the PVIFA for 4.5797. Evaluating this, we get the present value being 
$13,739.10. So Daniel needs to invest $13,739.10 today so that he can get $3,000 every year for five years, a total payout of $15,000. Our last example, Zoe wants to withdraw $500 each quarter for one year. How much does Zoe need to invest at the beginning of the year if interest rate is 8% per annum compounded quarterly? So in this question, the regular withdrawal amount will be $500. So our A is simply equal to $500. The interest rate stated in the question is 8% per annum. But because it gets compounded quarterly, we need to adjust this to an equivalent quarterly interest rate. Since there are four quarters in a year, we simply divide 8 by 4, and this will give us an equivalent quarterly interest rate of 2% per quarter. So our R value is 2% per quarter. So we also want to be able to withdraw $500 each quarter for one year year and that means that there's going to be a total of four payouts since there are four quarters in a year so the n value is going to be equal to four so having these values of r and n we then go to the table so two percent per quarter and four periods the pvifa value will be 3.8077 so we then substitute into this formula the A gets replaced by 500, the PVIFA gets replaced by 3.8077, and evaluating this, we're going to get $1,903.85, which means that if Zoe wants to be able to withdraw $500 every quarter for one year, she will need to deposit $1,903.85 today. In summary, what we learned in this video is that an annuity is simply an investment that involves regular deposits or withdrawals. The present value of an annuity, PVA, is the value of the investment at the beginning and it can be calculated using the formula or the interest factors. Thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoy that. For more videos on this topic or other topics, please check out our channel. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. We hope to see you all in the next one. Bye for now.